My name is Keith Rucker. Today I've got an interesting little project out here at the shop that uh, we're going to be working on. We're, uh, I've got a project coming up that I need to do some inside grinding on the lathe using a tool post grinder. I have a tool post grinder here uh, that I purchased some time back. Uh, it doesn't actually fit my lathe exactly right, but with some modifications we're able to use it on there. This uh, tool post grinder uh, it was actually made by South Bend. It has a South Bend decal on it. I found this um, at an um, old tool meet and was able to get a pretty good deal on it because it was really being sold at, in, I guess, the wrong audience. There wasn't very many machinists there. Uh, but anyway, I got a good deal on this when I got it. It works very well. I found a uh, um, I found in an old catalog, old South Bend catalog from 1953, this very, um, I think it was 1953, from the 1950s anyway, this very uh, grinder in that catalog. So it probably dates, I'm guessing, from the 1950s, uh, maybe even into the early 60s. It's in very good shape. Uh, but it's, it's set up for only outside grinding. It has a nice grinding wheel here. It works very good for outside grinding. I've used this on, on a couple of jobs over the years. Uh, I've been very happy with it. Uh, but it do, it's not really set up for doing inside grinding. In fact, usually for inside grinding, you use a totally different uh, tool post grinder altogether. Uh, not having one of those and having a job coming up where I need to do some inside grinding, what I've decided to do is actually uh, make a modification to this where I can use it for inside grinding. If you take the wheel off, I've already loosened that up so that I can pull it off easily here. It wasn't like that, I promise. But if you pull this off, there's a an arbor coming out here that the grinding wheel goes on. Uh, back here on the back, this is a half inch uh, diameter. As you get up here, these are half inch 20 threads. My plan here is I'm going to take a piece of inch and a half stock. I'm going to drill and tap and ream out a half inch on here so that it will thread up on here and the sh back shoulder of that shaft will go up against this uh, plate in the back that will hopefully give it some rigidity. I'm going to have it come out about uh, about four inches or about five inches actually. I need to go about four inches deep. So I'm going to make it about five inches deep and I have found a little grind wheel that I'm going to put out here on the end of this and that will allow me to take it up inside of what I'm going to be grinding and uh, do the job that I need to do. Uh, so we're going to be making that arbor extension for this uh, tool post grinder to do some inside grinding today. I have a piece of inch and a half stock set up in the lathe now. Um, this is just an old junky piece of steel <laughs> that looks like it came off of an old uh, arbor that had Babbitt bearings on that really scored it up and, and it's pretty much just a piece of scrap metal but uh, for this project I'll be able to turn out any of the, the bad stuff on it so uh, this would be a perfect uh, opportunity to recycle this piece of steel. I have no idea what grade it is and it really doesn't matter for this job uh, but we're going to start out with this and we're going to come in, uh, drill uh, and tap and ream out that hole in here so it'll be tapped in the bottom to screw up on there but reamed at the top to a half inch uh, uh, so that it can go up onto that shoulder on the, the shaft on the, on the grinder. We'll then just basically come in here and just true this up. We're not going to cut a lot of metal off, but we're going to clean it up. And then we'll flip this over and turn the arbor for the new grinding wheel on the other side. So let's get going. got that whole counter sunk. Now we're ready to drill this out. Uh, we're going to be tapping this uh, half inch 20 and uh, the closest drill bit I got to that is a 2964 uh, which will give us about a 75% thread uh, in there which should be fine for what we're doing. So we'll go ahead and punch this in. Uh, it needs to go probably about an inch deep but I'm going to go a little bit deeper than that so that my tap has plenty of clearance in the bottom uh, when I tap this out. Uh, so we'll go a little bit more than an inch deep on this. Alright, that should be about an inch and three-eighths deep. 
next step here is we want to ream out uh, the, the, the top part of this hole to exactly half inch, which is what will slide up onto the, uh, the arbor sticking out on the, on the actual grinder. So I've measured over there, I need to go 5 eighths inch deep uh, with the reamed out half to exactly half inch. Uh, and then the rest of the bottom of the hole will be tapped to half inch 20. Um, and that should give us a good shoulder to uh, screw up onto. And then again, it'll seat up flat against this outside edge here uh, in there. So we're gonna go ahead and get started reaming this. Uh, I've got this set where I can use the scale on the quill to go 5 eighths inch deep. It's not a super critical, but it needs to be pretty close, so the scale will be good enough for that. Uh, so I've slowed my lathe down, and we're going to go ahead and get started on this, uh, leaning this out. And that should be 5 eighths right there. Okay, now we're going to come in here and uh, just kiss this with the uh, 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 deburring tool or a countersinking tool just so we don't have a sharp edge on that corner and it doesn't need much that's plenty if you look down inside the hole i can see the shoulder down there where the smaller 2964 uh, drill was put in and we reamed in there and then we're going to tap the bottom of this hole now uh, just using a hand tap. Uh, what I've got is just a uh, hand tap set up here uh, in, a, in a tap handle or tap wrench. And uh, we're going to insert this down to the hole. It, it's, the outside diameter should go down through that ringed out portion until it hits that shoulder. Now to keep this running straight, I'm going to pull this up. I've got a uh, spring-loaded um, center here, and that's going to keep that running exactly straight there. And uh, then we'll just start hand tapping this hole. We have the extension arbor now uh, cut off of the shaft that we machined it on. Uh, and you see the hole, again, it's uh, uh, reamed out half inch down to a certain extent and then tapped half inch 20. And we're just going to do a test fit now. We've got the, uh, the tool post grinder over here uh, that slides up on there. It comes right up to the shoulder. It's screwing on. It feels good. And we take it all the way down and up against the back shoulder. Uh, Remember, you know, again, I, I, I've machined the back shoulder of this so it would be perfectly perpendicular to what I drilled. And the purpose is that I want to have good contact all the way around this flange because that's really where the rigidity is coming from, more so than the arbor inside, but really coming up against this outside flange. And the larger diameter I can have back here, uh, the better I'm going to be. In fact, you could have even made an argument to have made this, this uh, large diameter at least up here be the same diameter as that flange uh, and then machine this down a little bit smaller on this end. I considered that but anyway I had a piece of stock just right for this and this is the way we're going. So that looks good. Um, let's turn it on. Again it looks good. There might be just a little bit of run out in this arbor but that's really not critical because once I get the stone on here I will use a diamond uh, to dress that stone so that it's running perfectly true, even if the, the arbor may have a half a thousandth of run out or so in it. Um, but it, it doesn't look like there's much run out at all. So now we're ready to go back over to the lathe. I'm going to turn this down an inch on this end uh, to 3 eighths inch. We'll thread part of that to 3 eighths fine thread uh, so that we can put this wheel out here on the end. Uh, that will then go up inside what we're going to do an inside grind job on. All right, we're going to turn this shaft down to three eighths of an inch, uh, one inch deep.
a snug fit. All right, now I'm going to come in here and face uh, the back of that so that I have a good shoulder uh, to go up against. If you notice, I went in on the bottom here and actually made the the inside or the bottom end of this uh, this uh, diameter in a little bit, so that really it's only riding on the outside. And that's just a common practice when you're. Uh, putting a, on a grinding wheel, you really want to press it just on the outside ring and not on the inside so that you have a good uh, a good contact, particularly if there's something on that inside that's not letting it clamp up good and tight. So that looks good. Uh, we're ready to put some threads on there. Okay, we're ready to start threading this. I've got my machine set up on 24 threads per inch. We're going to check that. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and start chasing these threads out. Come in here and touch off. And I'll set my uh, cross slide to zero. I'm going to make a real light pass at this setting and double check with my thread gauge. We're going to engage there. My thread gauge on 24 threads per inch. And that looks like it's right on the money. So out we go, start the beginning, go back to zero. We'll feed in a couple of thousandths on the uh, compound. And make our next pass. Now that I've got my thread started uh, and getting close actually to the final depth, I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm just going to use a die and uh, we'll uh, finish cleaning these up with a die. A die uh, is sometimes hard to get started on stock. Uh, but I find it real, a real nice, easy, quick tool when you're threading on the lathe uh, in the times and places where you can to just go in there and get it to the exact diameter quick and easy, faster than threading. But I do find it easier to start the threads on the lathe uh, and then finish them up with a die than they're just trying to start it straight out. It's hard to get that die, a hand die, running true on a full cut, but uh, that should be exactly where we want it to be. And that feels good. got the little arbor extension, grinding arbor extension made now. Um, give it a try. Again, just put it, screw it onto that arbor. Seat the back side up against uh, the back flange. And there we go. You know, I've got probably uh, two hours of time in this this morning. If I hadn't been filming this and taking some time to do the extra steps that sometimes becomes involved in, in doing a good job filming, you know, 45 minutes, an hour, uh, this job would have been knocked out. Uh, the 
the piece of steel here was just a piece of scrap that was in the, in the, in the shop or a uh, recycled piece of steel actually in this case. Uh, the only only thing I've really got in this is the wheel and I, I bought that, got it from McMaster Car. I think I paid a little over seven dollars for it. Uh, so I've built this uh, uh, inside grinding arbor extension for about seven dollars and we'll just say an hour or two in time. Uh, which compared to buying an inside grinder, <laughs> it, it's a pretty good deal. So we're going to give this a try on our next project, and uh, I'll probably shoot that as a separate video. Uh, what we're going to try to do is uh, use this to true up a three-jaw chuck. Uh, I've got an old three-jaw chuck on this lathe uh, that pr probably is the same age as the lathe itself, which is 1953. And uh, it's over the years, we've got some run out in that chuck. So I'm going to actually try to use this to clean up and get an old chuck running true again. Uh, and I built this arbor, quite honestly, uh, with the application of where I'm going to use it in mind. So the diameters used and all that were specific for that job. How far it sticks out, again, was specific for that job that I have coming up. I don't have to go real deep and I'm going to be grinding a pretty large diameter, so I have a pretty large diameter wheel. This is a two inch diameter wheel. So anyway, um, you know, if I needed a longer uh, arbor or a smaller diameter stone, I think I could uh, do that as well pretty easily. Uh, I wanted to keep this diameter as large as I could just to give the rigidity, um, whereas if I was, uh, you know, doing something smaller, I could go down on a smaller size, but keep that as, as, as large as I can just to keep it from wobbling around. So there you go. Um, we're through with this one and we're going to give this a try and, and maybe you'll see this in action on uh, my next video that I do.